Um, Pete Scargill, your Racing Post colleague, has sat through every bit of this evidence and, and is with us now. Uh, morning, Peter. Morning, Nick. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. Um, I, I don't know if you could you could hear what what Paul Struthers was was saying there. Um, it, it was a it was a very interesting twist and turn of events. This took after the sentencing was handed down. It was extraordinary, Nick. Yeah, you, you'd have thought um, after something as dramatic as what happened to Robbie Dunn, that would almost be the story in itself. But you no, know, the um, the PGA's reaction, both their initial statement and then the the statement from the anonymous female jockeys, um, rather turbocharged things. It was good to see Paul Stroke in a somewhat more conciliatory tone this morning. But um, there's definitely elements within the within the weighing room that aren't convinced by what's happened at all, um, not least probably done by the sounds of it. Where do you think this is going to go now? Are you, an- are you anticipating an appeal? That seems to be the case, Nick. Yeah, um, that was the the initial reaction straight after the the hearing from um, from Dunn's legal team. I mean, at no point during the during the hearing did he really um, back down from his position. You know, he, he remained quite angry. Um, he remained um, of the position that was you know, Bryony Frost riding wasn't right. Her behaviour wasn't what he what he thought it should be. So, um, I mean, even his apology issue through. Um, Roderick Moore, his um, his legal representative, said, you know, Robbie would like to apologise for where the panel found that he'd fallen down rather than his own, so I'm, I'm sorry for what I did. So I can't see how he he won't appeal, and whether it's the the overall charges or whether it's the, the length of the ban, I mean, that would be, it would be a bit of a, a change from, from where we were, certainly the last couple of days anyway. I mean, the defence was, it was interesting, Peter, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it strikes me, and I didn't sit through every bit of this like you did, but it strikes me that they bet the house on contextualising Robbie Dunn's conduct um, as part of weighing room culture. So, therefore, when the panel rejected that as a defence, weighing room culture was going to come down with him. So, do you agree with me that... It, They've almost been architects of their own downfall in that regard. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly true. Um, trying to contextualise and normalise his behaviour was one of them. And they also tried to boil it down to, to two incidents, basically uh, an incident at Stratford, uh, which was the worrying moment in the fence attendant one people probably remember it best as, and the uh, southern incident where he threatened to put her through the wing. So, um, no, they had a parade of... of Jockeys, um, Richard Johnson, Tom Scudamore, uh, Nicola Boyneville, Ben Post. Um, uh, and then they they just, all of them, and then the valets as well, they were all just saying, look, this happens. Uh, it was bickering. Uh, people say we're going to put each other through the wing, but we don't mean it. We've never seen it happen. Um, you know, all, all of this kind of made you think, well, it's not really <laughs> right, even if it's what happens. And, and clearly there were... It was the manner in which Robbie Dunn delivered his his threats to Bryony Frost that, that tipped her over the edge. Um, there were certain elements they tried to kind of paint her as a bit bit feeble, a bit weak, a bit kind of snowflakey as well, um, which I thought was was rather unfair. She was she was very good in her evidence, um, and clearly the subtle incident, as we'll call it, and the attempted reconciliation at Kempton. I mean, they they deeply affected her. She was she was quite robust in her evidence, but both of those occasions she got quite upset. You know, it was. It was stark, the, the effect it had had on her. This is getting more entrenched, isn't it? This is just getting more and more entrenched. And that, that I think, is the sad thing. Robbie Dunn's brother, David, has, has taken to his social media page this morning. I, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, uh, about an hour ago. And he starts his post. I'm not going to read it all because I, there, there's stuff in here that is, you know, potentially fairly close to the edge legally, but he starts with it's about time somebody from the Robbie Dunn side stepped up and told the truth and stopped pandering around in case they got into trouble with the authorities. Well, he certainly doesn't pander pander around at all. Do you get the feeling that there's an awful lot that was unsaid in this case, that people wanted to say but felt that they couldn't? No, not, not particularly. Um... There, there was there were certain references made by the defence um, about 
um, you know, Brian Frost's riding style and how this was this was what what inflamed um, Robbie Dunn and you know plenty of other jockeys um, were frustrated by this. Um, they spent very little time on it really in their evidence. Um, they just as they I mean, Dunn was so strong in his position um, throughout. I mean, he, he they went through replays of certain races um, and he was sort of told off by by Brian Barker, the chair of the panel, for not doing what he was asked. He was asked to talk through his rides and, and he spent a lot of the time um, saying how Bryony Foss was renowned for doing this and she shouldn't be doing that. So, you know, there was a there was an annoyance there. Um, and and there, was a, there was a comment he made here that I've just, I've just noted down around Hannah Welch, um, who, you know, gave evidence about a uh, about an incident that, that happened at Chepstow in 2018. And, and Dunn said, do you think people like Richard Johnson, Tom Skudem or Noel Freely would stand around if I was speaking to someone for a minute, sharing, swearing and shouting, um, it didn't happen. So he, he, the, he's so strong in his position that when they found so unequivocally against him, you can understand why you know, they feel there's been a, a misreporting or a campaign against them or you know it wasn't it wasn't treated properly because it was leaked um there was just as as paul strother said himself they were so polar opposite the two camps that you know there was, there was no meeting in the middle and no real attempt to meet in the middle at any point didn't the the panel ultimately pete just boil this down boil this right down try to shut out all that surround and say, this is about you, bullying you. We believe you to be a credible witness and we think you're not taking this seriously enough. End. That's how I take it, Nick. And there's a lot of what's been lost in the subsequent um, discussion. Obviously, a lot of focus on what um, Louis Weston said in his in his closing statement. Uh, a lot of focus on what um, the PJA said. Um, some focus on, on, the, on the BHA trying to steer the ship back on course. Um, now, this was this was a case against Robbie Dunn. Um, Bryony Frost gave evidence, and she obviously made the complaints. And, and in the end, Dunn was found to be a not, not particularly credible witness. Um, and the panel the panel could, couldn't really find anything other than Bryony Frost. Really, when you when you sat through it, it was um, it was a it was a, a small case in the sense of, of the, the minutiae of it. But it's obviously it's expanded, and and people are getting stuck into all sorts of things about it now. I mean, th- there is clearly the, this um, impasse between the BHA and the PGA that's got to be worked out. I mean, Paul Struthers was trying to you know, sound a slightly more, more conciliatory, conciliatory note there. The BHA have got some responsibilities, though, to consider, haven't they? Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, look, it's, um, it took too long to get to to get to, to trial as it were. I appreciate there were legal arguments and, and what have you that had to take place and these things can drag out because um, that's the nature of that's the nature of legal discussions. Um, you know there were there were certainly two leaks. Um, you know, there was the one to the mail on Sunday and there was a one to, to David Walsh. So it it didn't it took too long. Um, it wasn't particularly well handled in that sense and it was allowed to to fester and get to a position where everyone was so revved up about it by, it ha- by the time it happens, um, you know, it, 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 caused, it caused its own problems. Uh, Peter, thanks so much. Thank you, Nick.